Hello and a very warm welcome to Great Claxton Parish and to this our Sunday service. Thank you for joining us today. Whether you're joining us as this premieres or whether you're catching up later, whenever you're catching up later, you're very warmly welcomed. And if you are um, watching as this premieres, do take the opportunity, if you can use the live chat, to greet one another. If you can't use that live chat, well, maybe find another way to greet someone else who you know is watching at this time. You're our online congregation. It's great to have you with us. And today I'm filming from St John's Church, where we're set up for our Sunday morning service. And uh, this Sunday, our service is uh, another special one. It's uh, what we call Mission Sunday, where we focus on our links, our mission links with folks across the world. Here in St John's, we'll be watching a video that uh, Gift and Catherine Asiku across in Uganda have made for us. And we'll be able to watch that as part of our online service today as well. That's our special extra bit uh, for today here in our Sunday online service. It's great to have Mark Holdaway uh, with us as well once more. And we'll be continuing to look at Matthew's Gospel together. And while we've been looking near the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapters 4 and 5, uh, the last few weeks... We now switch to towards the end of the gospel as we prepare to hear the Easter story uh, once more. And we'll be following that through Matthew's gospel over the next couple of weeks. Well, in just a moment, I'm going to hand over uh, to Mark. Uh, he's going to lead us through the first part of our service as well. Uh, introduce our first hymn, lead us through our confession onto our creed we'll have a song from from phil to remind us about the great forgiveness we can know in jesus over to mark just now and so let me begin with these uh, verses from psalm 118 give thanks to the lord for he is good his love endures forever give thanks to the lord for he is good and let's do that shall we with our first hymn praise my soul the king of heaven
Uh, he's a farmer in a story that Jesus told. Uh, he made all of his plans about himself. He made all of his plans for getting God. And he's a lesson to all of us how easy it is to forget about God. How easy it is to want to think and talk about I and my. And it's right to say sorry to God for the times we do that. For the actual words we say, for the thoughts within our hearts. And so we're going to say together the words of our confession. Lord God, we've sinned against you. We've done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's good to hear these words written down for us in Psalm 118. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let's turn now together, shall we, to our words of our creed, our words of belief. Uh, and so maybe today it's good to particularly focus on the third paragraph. Let me read it very briefly to you now before we read it together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. All of those excellent truths, aren't they, to remember, particularly uh, every day, but particularly at a time like this. Let's say the whole creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The price is paid, come let us enter in To all that Jesus died to make our own For every sin, more than enough he gave And bought our freedom from each guilty stay The price is paid, alleluia Amazing grace, so strong Satan flee away For Jesus crucified Destroys his power No more to pay Let accusation cease In Christ there is no condemnation now The price is paid Alleluia Amazing grace So strong and sure And so with all I live to thank you for the price you pay. The price is paid, worthy the Lamb we cry. Eternity. 
eternity shall never cease his praise. The church of Christ shall rule upon the earth. In Jesus' name we have authority. The price is paid. Alleluia. Amazing grace, so strong and sure, and so with all my heart, my life in every part, I live to thank you for the price you Let us pray. A collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Redeemer God, we come in this season of Lent conscious of our weaknesses, dismayed by the feebleness of our faith, and yearning to show penitence at our inability to serve you as we would and should. But we also come gladly and with confidence, knowing that you are a gracious God, slow to punish, swift to forgive, always looking to bless, restore and renew. Remind us of that truth as we worship you both now and in the days ahead, so that true repentance may be matched by your true thanksgiving and sorrow at our many faults be balanced by the rejoicing of your inestimable love and mercy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we stand alongside all those who are suffering, whether in body, mind or spirit, and long for your healing comfort, your strength for perseverance and patience in dark times. We long for the living spirit to envelop and sustain them. We pray especially today for those who are alone, lifting to you those who need your comfort and peace. We pray, Lord, for all who grieve at this time, that they will know your presence in these dark days. We pray for those awaiting treatments or results of tests, and we pray silently in our hearts for those that we know and love. Amen. Father God, we lift up our missionaries overseas. Lord, you have called them away from their homeland to follow you for your purpose in their lives and to the lives of those they come in contact with. It reminds us of Abraham going by obedience, not knowing what he would find in the journey ahead. Overseas missionaries, much like Abraham, have awoken to the call in their own hearts to venture beyond what they have known, to follow in obedience, to share with others about you, Lord. Father, we pray for our protection over them. We pray for safety and favour as they take every step in obedience 
into these lands. We pray that the hearts they come into contact with would be open and willing to hear and receive the beautiful and life-altering truth of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for open doors and victory in your name so that none of your children would be missed out. We pray that your children would come to the table of the Lord. Many doors that have long since closed to visitors swing wide open by divine influence in order that your call to all your followers may be carried out by your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, in just a moment, we'll, as promised, have that video from Gift and Catherine in Uganda. But before we get there, let's uh, pause and have one or two notices in the middle of our service today together. If you are watching this as it premieres on Sunday the 26th of March, do let me tell you that this afternoon here at St John's we have a short uh, and small communion service, um, just, just an hour together at four o'clock, Holy Communion here in St John's. Uh, that's what we have monthly on a Sunday afternoon. Do join us if you'd like to. And then through this week, quite a few things going on, um, as well as our regular uh, children's and youth events. We've got the Bethany Bereavement Cafe. That's on Monday, Monday the 27th. That's two o'clock at St John's across in the church hall. Um, on Tuesday at St Mark's, 11.45, the doors open for our Tuesday's lunch club. And lunch will be served there Tuesday the 28th at quarter past, quarter past 12. Um, on Wednesday, also at St. Mark's Church, we have our Wednesday worshippers, our Holy Communion service. And then on Thursday here at St. John's, across in the hall, it's together, together again. That's the, 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 the coffee morning that um, alternates with our together service. And this week, Thursday the 30th, it's the coffee morning together again. Then on uh, Thursday evening at St. Mark's, this time 7 for 7.15. It is the um, next Lent meeting, our next Lent meeting. Th th we've been following th the parables that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15 uh, about um, being lost and being found. And this week we're focusing on, in Jesus' story of the lost son, the prodigal son, the elder brother. And do, do, do come along there if you can for that. And then on Friday, Friday the 31st, it's our last warm space for this year. That's in the church hall. Come along any time from nine till one. Uh, a warm place to be and a warm welcome as well. Tea and toast and refreshments provided. And then, as I mentioned last week, Saturday the 1st of April, we've got our newcomers uh, morning, 10 o'clock at St John's. For anybody who's new to us over the last few years, you'd be very welcome to come along and just find out a bit more about what we do as a church. Next Sunday, it's Palm Sunday, 9 o'clock at St John's, at 10.30 at St Mark's for an all-age Palm Sunday service, uh, 11 o'clock here online, and also 4 o'clock for our Easter special tea time church, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It'd be great to see you at any or as many of those as you'd like to come along to. 
but certainly he will be here online celebrating Pan Sunday. And then we've got a few birthdays this week. Uh, not a huge list, but three people to sing to, and maybe some people I don't know about. But I do know that it's Janet's birthday, it's Stephanie's birthday, and it's Reg's birthday. So we sing to them, to Janet, to Stephanie, and to Reg. Da 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 da. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Janet, Stephanie, and Reg. Happy birthday to you. So, a round of applause for them and to anybody else with a birthday this week. Well, as I said, uh, at St John's and St Mark's, uh, we're especially having a Mission Sunday when we think about the connections we have with our mission links across the world. And for this time, we've had uh, a wonderful video made by Gift and Catherine at Siku in Uganda. Uh, Gift and Catherine work with Bible translation work, helping the Bible to get translated into the local languages uh, of the people in uh, Uganda so that they can read and enjoy and learn from the Bible in their own heart languages, as they call them, the language that they understand and relate to the best. We've a special link with the Banyoli people, um, and we've supported their Bible translation work. But Gift and Catherine have uh, an oversight over a much uh, w wider number of translation projects. Gift works with the translation side, and uh, Catherine works with the literacy side, uh, helping people to um, improve their reading and so on, so that they can uh, read the Bible when it is translated into their own languages. Let's hear a little bit about what they do, and then we'll follow up with some prayer uh, just afterwards. So I hope you enjoy this now. Uh, it's just six or seven minutes long, um, and uh, we get an insight into their life and their work. Good morning to everyone in Clacton. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gift Asiko. And, and my name is Catherine Asiku. We are based in Entebbe. We work for Wycliffe Bible Translators and we support Banyole and Bagwere and other projects in Uganda. I am a literacy worker. And I am a language programs coordinator. I supervise Bible translation work in Uganda. We'd like to start by telling you a bit about what's been happening in our family this year, since January. Um, James, our oldest son, who's now 14, has just started secondary school at the end of February, and uh, he's settling in well. And Simon Peter is in his final year of primary school and is commuting from home to school. In February, we were happy to welcome a team from St. John's Church in Felbridge in Sussex, who came to spend 10 days with us in Uganda. And during that time, both James and Simon Peter were baptized, and that day was a blessing and a big encouragement to us as a family. We have um, other people staying with us at home. We have one niece called Lucky who's a teenager, and two other teenage boys called Clifford and Gilbert. So we are six in our household at the moment. Let me tell you a bit about what I've been doing in my work. Um, in January, I went to a place called Abin in northern Uganda to help train some local community members to write in their language, which is called Lektur. That was a very interesting experience experience and I learned a lot from it. And then in February I was preparing to um, travel to the Banyole community, which I did in March, um, with some colleagues to talk about a new literacy project called Let's Read Together. The people there in um, Banyole are very excited about producing more books in their language, Banyole, and setting up reading groups for children to come and read once a week in a community setting 
out of school and practice their reading to improve their literacy skills. I am currently responsible for supervising four literacy and education interns, we might call them graduate trainees, who are Ugandans and uh, they are learning more about how to work in literacy and education in the organisation we are working with to support Bible translation so that people can read the translated scriptures once they're published. Do you want to tell us about your work? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my work has been a lot busier and uh, one of the main goals I have for this year is to enable the printing and publication of the Old Testament portions that have been translated already by some languages. Among which we have two languages that uh, have Old Testament portions that we already printed. One is the Lubuisi. Lubuisi are in Bundubuji area and they have published and we are waiting for a time to dedicate them. And also in my hands here is Aringa. These are books for Aringa, nine Old Testament books that they have been working on in the last five years. And today I have them in my hands. Tomorrow I'm traveling to Yumbe and on Thursday we will be having a celebration of the dedication of these nine Old Testament books. And these nine Old Testament books include the book of Joshua, the book of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, uh, Jonah, Nahum, and Malachi. They decided that they wanted to translate the prophets. So that is really a very, very wonderful opportunity. And right now, they are translating the book of Psalms and they want the Book of Psalms printed so that they can compose songs and have the church read the Book of Psalms daily. We are very grateful for your support for Lunyole and Baguere. And for Lunyole, we are now typesetting some Old Testament portions, and that includes the Book of Psalms and the Book of Deuteronomy, the Book of Esther, and, and the Book of Ruth that we will be printing for the church to begin using this year. Thank you so much for your support and continue to support the work we're doing. We do have some prayer requests and we will ask that uh, you pray for us and particularly for us as we'll be traveling. I'll be traveling with a team of uh, seven other people for the dedication of the Aringa Bible. And thereafter, we'll be traveling for the Lubuisi dedication uh, in mid this year. Pray that the printing of Lunyole where Bible portions will be done in good time for the church to have these portions. Catherine has other priorities. Please pray for James to settle in well in secondary school. Please pray for James and Simon Peter to grow in their Christian faith. And uh, pray for me as I am organising a writer's workshop to take place next month in April in the Agrarian region in Eastern Uganda. We're going to be training writers and uh, helping them to produce story books and other reading materials for the reading groups to use as part of the Let's Read Together project. Please commit that to the Lord in prayer and pray for safe travels, for wisdom and for the right people to come along and be part of that work so that it can be very successful. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Well, that was really interesting, wasn't it? And great to hear from Gift and Catherine. Let's just pause and uh, pray for them just now. So, Father God, we thank you for Gift and Catherine. We thank you for all that they do as they um, oversee Bible translation work, as they help with the, the literacy 
of people in Uganda to help them read the Bible in their own uh, languages that they know best. And we do pray that as that happens, and people can read the, the, the Bible in their own heart languages, you would be with them, you would speak to them, you, you would help them to know you better, and you would transform lives through your word. We pr especially pray for Gift and Catherine as they travel around the country, uh, sometimes to quite remote places, that you would keep them safe on their journeys. And we thank you that they can share in the joy of churches who come to have the Bible in their own tongue. And Father, we pray for them too as a family. We pray um, for James and for Simon Peter uh, there, uh, as they attend school. We pray that um, as things change for them as they, as they grow older, you would help them to, to, to settle into new routines and you would help them to learn and grow in uh, their, their knowledge, grow in their wisdom and that you would help them to grow spiritually as well, that they too may know and love you in their lives. We thank you for all the work that uh, Gift and Catherine do and we pray that you would bless your church in Uganda, especially through this translation work. And we do pray once more for our own con connection with the Banyoli people and the translation of the, the, the Bible into the Lanyoli language. Father God, may you speed that work so that the people there can come to rejoice uh, in all that you're doing and all that you've done for them. And we pray all these things in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we thank God for his work in translating the, uh, overseeing the translation of the Bible into uh, the languages in Uganda. And of course, we can rejoice that we have the Bible in our own language and we can read it and learn from it. And that's what we hope to do uh, just now as we come to today's uh, Bible reading um, from a, a bit further on in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 20 uh, today, leading us towards uh, the, 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 what happens um, at Easter as recorded in Matthew. I think I'm c competing with the uh, seagulls as I uh, pray and lead at the moment, but hopefully you, you can still uh, hear me over there uh, that their noise is outside. So we're going to first of all uh, sing um, that we would see Jesus through our uh, reading of the scriptures and of our learning uh, from it. Uh, Rachel's going to lead us in, in, in this uh, special song prayer as we come to our Bible reading and then Mark's going to read for us and uh, teach us First Rachel, then Mark. Thank you to them both.
Easter is getting closer and it's very easy for us not to uh, appreciate it. So we are thinking about some verses from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel. Let me read them. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favour of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When they heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus in Matthew 20 verses 17 to 19 has just predicted his death and in these verses 20 to 28 uh, this exchange takes place. There's a request. It comes from Mum. It comes about James and John. But we discover later on, verse 25, that actually everybody wants to make uh, the same request. And the request is that Jesus will look at what we've done and be pleased and honoured with us. That we will be honoured by him. But there is a, a mistake in it. The mistake is pushing ourselves forward. That's what James and John want. That's what their mother wants. That's what the others want. They want to be seen for what they have done. They want to be seen. And we might do that in front of others. We may want the place of honour. We might just do that in our own sort of picturing of our life. Haven't we done well? whether anyone else recognises it or not. Well, Jesus responds to their request. Verses 26 and 27. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. The way of Jesus' kingdom is not to claim all that we've done and come to the front. The way of Jesus' kingdom is to serve others to put others first and to take a step back. And it is great to see so many people uh, serving others in so many different ways. And we give thanks to God for them. But we also use them to show us Jesus. Now, that is the way of the kingdom because that is the way of the king. It's great to think of all those who serve it's even better to think of the one who serves even more, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Maybe we'll trust ourselves a little bit less, and maybe we'll trust Jesus a little bit more. A short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the great servant, who served so much that he gave his life as a ransom for many. May we in these weeks spend a bit of time, more time, extra time, remembering what he has done, his service of us, of all that he gave up. Amen. Well, thank you to Mark once more uh, for his teaching. Great to be able to, 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 to share in what the folks at uh, Kirby 
and Great Holland have learnt from him uh, as well. And thank you to you for joining us today. We're coming towards the end of our time uh, together. As we always say, if there's anything you want to ask about or get in touch about from what you've uh, seen or anything you've heard about coming up in church that you want a bit more information on, do get in touch uh, either with the church office or with me, mark.gtclacton at gmail.com. Uh, through the email is probably the easiest way. Always lovely to hear from you. And we uh, come to a great hymn. Mark encouraged us to, to look uh, towards the, the, the Lord Jesus and not to rely in any way on uh, what we are or, or what we've done. Um, humbling ourselves, realising our, our need uh, to, to, to be supplied by G the Lord Jesus and to, 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 to serve him uh, and to serve uh, uh, God as well. And we're going to sing a great a hymn that reminds us that all that we need comes uh, from the Lord through through Jesus. And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Saviour's blood? Let's uh, sing together as Rachel leads us, and then Mark will lead us in a final prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, oh, oh.
Let's close with these words from Romans chapter 15. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.